he commanded the steward of his house, saying, Fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put every man's money in his sack's mouth. Put my cup, the silver cup, in the sack's mouth of the youngest with his grain money. He did according to the word that Joseph had spoken. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away, they and their donkeys. When they had gone out of the city and were not yet far off, Joseph said to his steward, Go, follow after the men. When you overtake them, ask them, Why have you rewarded evil for good? Isn't this that from which my Lord drinks, and by which he indeed divines? You have done evil in so doing. He overtook them, and he spoke to them these words. They said to him, Why does my Lord speak such words as these? Far be it from your servants that they should do such a thing. Behold, the money which we found in our sacks' mouths we brought again to you out of the land of Canaan. How then should we steal silver or gold out of your Lord's house? With whoever of your servants it be found, let him die, and we also will be my Lord's bondservants. He said, Now also let it be according to your words. He with whom it is found will be my bondservant, and you will be blameless. Then they hurried and took down every man his sack to the ground and opened every man his sack. He searched, beginning with the eldest and ending at the youngest. The cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they tore their clothes and loaded every man his donkey and returned to the city. Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, and he was still there. They fell on the ground before him. Joseph said to them, What deed is this that you have done? Don't you know that such a man as I can indeed divine? Judah, Judah said, What will we tell, my Lord? What will we speak? Or how will we clear ourselves? God has found out the iniquity of your servants. Behold, we are my Lord's bondservants, both we and he also in whose hand the cup is found. He said, Far be it from me that I should do so. The man in whose hand the cup is found, he will be my bondservant. But as for you, go up in peace to your father. Then Judah came near to him and said, O oh, my Lord, please let your servant speak a word in my Lord's ear, and don't let your anger burn against your servant, for you are even as Pharaoh. My Lord asked his servants, saying, Have you a father or a brother? We said to my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a child of his old age, a little one, and his brother is dead, and he alone is left of his mother, and his father loves him. You said to your servants, Bring him down to me, that I may set my eyes on him. We said to my Lord, The boy can't leave his father, for if he should leave his father, his father would die. You said to your servants, Unless your youngest brother comes down with you, you will see my face no more. It happened, when we came up to your servant my father, we told him the words of my Lord. Our father said, Go again, buy us a little food. We said, We can't go down. If our youngest brother is with us, then we will go down, for we may not see the man's face unless our youngest brother is with us. Your servant my father said to us, You know that my wife bore me two sons, and the one went out from me, and I said, Surely he is torn in pieces, and I haven't seen him since. If you take this one also from me, and harm happens to him, you will bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to Sheol." Now, therefore, when I come to your servant, my father, and the boy is not with us, seeing that his life is bound up in the boy's life, it will happen, when he sees that the boy is no more, that he will die. Your servants will bring down the gray hairs of your servant, our father, with sorrow to Sheol. For your servant became collateral for the boy to my father, saying, If I don't bring him to you, then I will bear the blame to my father forever." Now, therefore, please let your servant stay instead of the boy, a bondservant to my Lord, and let the boy go up with his brothers. For how will I go up to my father if the boy isn't with me, lest I see the evil that will come on my father?
It was now two days before the feast of the Passover and the unleavened bread, and the chief priest and the scribe sought how they might seize him by deception and kill him. For they said, Not during the feast, because there might be a riot of the people. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came having an alabaster jar of ointment of pure nard, very costly. She broke the jar and poured it over his head. But there were some who were indignant among themselves, saying, Why has this ointment been wasted? For this might have been sold for more than three hundred denarii and given to the poor. They grumbled against her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want to, you can do them good, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for the burying. Most assuredly, I tell you, wherever this gospel may be preached throughout the whole world, that which this woman has done will also be spoken of for a memorial of her. Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went away to the chief priest that he might deliver him to them. They, when they heard it, were glad and promised to give him money. He sought how he might conveniently deliver him. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover, his disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make ready that you may eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and there you will meet a man carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him, and wherever he enters in, tell the master of the house. The teacher says, Where is the guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will himself show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make ready for us there. His disciples went out and came into the city, and found things as he had said to them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. As they sat and were eating, Jesus said, Most assuredly, I tell you, one of you will betray me, he who eats with me. They began to be sorrowful and to ask him one by one, Surely not I. And another said, Surely not I. He answered them, It is one of the twelve, he who dips with me in the dish. For the Son of Man goes, even as it is written about him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had not been born. As they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had blessed, he broke it and gave to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. He took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them. They all drank of it. He said to them, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. Most assuredly, I tell you, I will no more drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus said to them, All of you will be made to stumble because of me tonight, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. However, after I am raised up, I will go before you into Galilee. But Peter said to him, Although all will be offended, yet I will not. Jesus said to him, Most assuredly I tell you, that you today, even this night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he spoke all the more, If I must die with you, I will not deny you. They all said the same thing. They came to a place which was called Gethsemane. He said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be greatly troubled and distressed. He said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. He went forward a little and fell on the ground, and prayed that, if it were possible, the hour might pass away from him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Please remove this cup from me. However, not what I desire, but what you desire. He came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Couldn't you watch one hour? Watch and pray that you not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. Again he returned and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they didn't know what to answer him. He came the third time and said to them, Sleep on now and take your rest. It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Arise, let us be going. Behold, he who betrays me is at hand. Immediately while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came, 
and with him a multitude with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now he who betrayed him had given them a sign, saying, Whoever I kiss, this is he, seize him and lead him away safely. When he had come, immediately he came to him and said, Rabbi, Rabbi, and kissed him. They laid their hands on him and seized him. But a certain one of those who stood by drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and cut off his ear. Jesus answered them, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? I was daily with you in the temple teaching, and you didn't arrest me. But this is so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. They all left him and fled. A certain young man followed him, having a linen cloth thrown around himself over his naked body. The young men grabbed him, but he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest. All the chief priests, the elders, and the scribes came together with him. Peter had followed him from a distance until he came into the court of the high priest. He was sitting with the officers and warming himself in the light of the fire. Now the chief priest and the whole council sought witnesses against Jesus to put him to death and found none. For many gave false testimony against him and their testimony didn't agree with each other. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands and in three days I will build another made without hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it which these testify against you? But he stayed quiet and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Jesus said, I am. You will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of the sky. The high priest tore his clothes and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him to be worthy of death. Some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to beat him with fists and to tell him, Prophesy! The officers struck him with the palms of their hands. As Peter was in the courtyard below, one of the maids of the high priest came, and seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You were also with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are saying. He went out on the porch, and the cock crowed. The maid saw him, and began again to tell those who stood by, This is one of them. But he again denied it. After a little while again, those who stood by said to Peter, You truly are one of them, for you are a Galilean, and your speech shows it. But he began to curse and to swear, I don't know this man of whom you speak. The cock crowed the second time. Peter remembered the word, how that Jesus said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. When he thought about that, he wept. Chapter 10 My soul is weary of my life. I will give free course to my complaint. I will speak in the bitterness of my soul. I will tell God, Do not condemn me. Show me why you contend with me. Is it good to you that you should oppress, that you should despise the work of your hands, and smile on the counsel of the wicked? Do you have eyes of flesh, or do you see as a man sees? Are your days as the days of mortals, or your years as man's years, that you inquire after my iniquity, and search after my sin? Although you know that I am not wicked, there is no one who can deliver out of your hand. Your hands have framed me, and fashioned me altogether, yet you destroy me. Remember, I beg you, that you have fashioned me as clay. Will you bring me again into the dust? Haven't you poured me out like milk, and curdled me like cheese? You have clothed me with skin and flesh, and knit me together with bones and sinews. You have granted me life and loving kindness. Your visitation has preserved my spirit. Yet you hid these things in your heart. I know that this is with you. If I sin, then you mark me. You will not acquit me from my iniquity. If I am wicked, woe to me. If I am righteous, I still shall not lift up my head, being filled with disgrace and conscious of my affliction. 
If my head is held high, you hunt me like a lion. Again you show yourself powerful to me. You renew your witness against me and increase your indignation on me. Changes in warfare are with me. Why, then, have you brought me forth out of the womb? I wish I had given up the spirit, and no eye had seen me. I should have been as though I had not been. I should have been carried from the womb to the grave. Aren't my days few? Cease, then, leave me alone, that I may find a little comfort, before I go to where I shall not return from, to the land of darkness and of the shadow of death. The land dark as midnight, of the shadow of death without any order, where the light is as midnight. Now receive one who is weak in faith, but not for disputes over opinions. One man has faith to eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Don't let him who eats despise him who doesn't eat. Don't let him who doesn't eat judge him who eats, for God has received him. Who are you to judge another's servant? To his own Lord he stands or falls. Yes, he will be made to stand, for God has power to make him stand. One man esteems one day as more important. Another esteems every day alike. Let each man be fully assured in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord, and he who does not observe the day to the Lord he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. He who doesn't eat, to the Lord he doesn't eat, and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to himself, and none dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, or if we die, we die to the Lord. If therefore we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died, rose, and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But you... Why do you judge your brother? Are you again? Why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, to me every knee will bow, every tongue will confess to God. So then each one of us will give account of himself to God. Therefore let's not judge one another any more, but judge this rather, that no man put a stumbling block in his brother's way or an occasion for falling. I know and am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean of itself, except that to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet if because of food your brother is grieved, you walk no longer in love. Don't destroy with your food him for whom Christ died. Then don't let your good be slandered, for the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. So then, let us follow after things which make for peace and things by which we may build one another up. Don't overthrow God's work for food's sake. All things indeed are clean. However, it is evil for that man who creates a stumbling block by eating. It is good not to eat meat, drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles, is offended or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who doesn't judge himself in that which he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats, because it isn't of faith, and whatever is not of faith is sin.' 